What's up everyone, Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids, and today we're talking about what I'm calling oversized knives. Now the reason I call them oversized is because we've talked about small knives, we've talked about large knives, we're going to be talking about medium sized knives soon, and these oversized knives are just bigger and heavier than pretty much any of those knives. Now that being said, uh, for a lot of people these are going to fall outside of what they would generally consider usable for everyday carry, but I myself don't mind carrying a knife this big for my everyday carry knife. So maybe you're in that category too, we're going to take a look at a handful of these knives. First, let's talk about why you might want to carry what I'm calling an oversized knife. First is just maybe you need a big hefty knife for whatever purposes you have going on, say during the day, your work, uh, you know, there's something that you really need a large knife for and you don't mind carrying this big hefty EDC folder. So maybe that's the case. In general, another thing you want to think about is not always true, but generally speaking, again, oversized knives, uh, the bigger the knife is, uh, it can be stronger because it's just got thicker steel, just heavier overall build, stronger overall build. Again, not always true, but generally speaking, you know, if you got a quarter inch thick folding knife, which is huge, then that's going to be able to take more uh, aggressive use than something that's, you know, a, a tiny little knife like I'm thinking of, like the Kershaw Leak. That's not definitely not an aggressive, a knife for aggressive use. Um, something you want to think about is just the size of the knife in relation to the regulations in your particular area. So maybe you can have a certain size knife if it's a folder, but once it gets you know above a certain number of inches for the blade, it's not legal. So make sure you check on all your legal regulations in your particular area so that you're, uh, if you want to carry what I'm calling the oversized knives, uh, you can do that without getting yourself into trouble. All right, so we got a handful of knives we're going to look at here. Let's uh, bring the camera down to the table and we'll... Uh, start talking about these knives. Okay, the first one we're gonna talk about here is new from Ruger and CRKT. You can see the Ruger emblem there, CRKT on this side. This is the Ruger two-stage. You can get it in the plain edge or the, the uh, serrated edge with the VEF serrations. It's HCR 13 MOV. It does have an alum aluminum handle and a four position pocket clip, so tip up, tip down, right and left. Uh, it does obviously have this Tonto blade. You can get it in a smaller version which is 3.58 inch of a blade, and then this one actually is a uh, is a four inch blade. So not a huge difference between the two. Um, this is a hefty knife. All these knives are hefty, but this one, like when I first picked it up, I'm like, that is large and in charge. I think it's a good looking knife. I'd like to see what the smaller one looks like just to kind of test it out and to compare the two. You got that Tonto tip, um, that Tonto point, so it's gonna be strong, good for piercing, general utility knife, this thing has some heft and some weight to it, so you're going to be able to use it aggressively in a lot of different ways. Got a lanyard hole here, as well as you know, glass breaker, something to crush objects with, whatever it might be. Uh, no thumb studs or anything on this, so you're going to deploy it using using the flipper, and you want to you want to give it a little love when you do that. Uh, the other thing I'll tell you is that it is a frame lock, so some people like that, some people don't, but for this size knife, I don't mind it at all. Some jimping up top there and on the spine of the blade, and then some jimping on the bottom here for uh, you know that total control of the knife. Once again, this is the Ruger two stage, and if you like the style but you want something a little bit smaller, uh, you can get it in the uh, the smaller version. So four inch blade for this one, 3.58 for the uh, the other knife. Next up here we have this one. This is the Sog Kiku. And uh, cool looking knife, very uh, unique design. They do have fixed blade versions of that. They have smaller versions of that. This one with the plain edge, and uh, they'll actually all have plain edges, but this one with the satin finish, the large version is gonna run you around $130. All state steel, it's got that cool recurve. Um, just overall a very dynamic looking knife. You can get it in the satin finish. You, you can also get it in black. You have a 5.6 inch blade for the large version and a 4.6 inch blade for the smaller version. Uh, you do have a little lanyard hole there. They do give you an extra pocket clip if you want to put it on the opposite side. Um, that takes a little bit of work, but it's not terrible. A little bit of texture here on the top. I don't know if I'd call that jimping, but definitely textured there. And there is some texture down here in the uh, in the frame lock. Cool knife, very uh, very unique style. Sog put that together, or it worked with Kiku to put that together. Does say Sog on this side, and then has the uh, has his signature on the uh, on the other side thumb stud for deployment yeah again you know this is definitely a, uh, a larger knife it's not going to be as I don't think you could use it as aggressively maybe as that two stage from uh, Ruger and CRKT but this is looking very tactical very self-defense I mean you feel like a ninja when I'm carrying this thing so it's not the heaviest of all the knives but uh, 
definitely is, you know, it's not a tiny little EDC knife. So uh, if you like the style but you want something smaller, you can check that one out. I think this is a very, very handsome blade. Overkill for everyday carry for me, but as far as, you know, a, uh, a knife that I could put into a bag or, you know, have with me as a backup when I'm out in the woods, something like that, this is definitely one worth checking out. Next up we have the Schrade SCH302, got that Tonto point. Um, some of the details on this, it's titanium coated, it's a stainless steel underneath that coating. Your blade 3.7 inches long, your overall length 8.6 inches, beefy, strong, hefty, uh, hefty knife. This thing is actually notably comfortable in hand. So you do have this little swedge here on the top, it's not really a swedge on the blade, but this little cutout here on the top. Tonto point, so it's going to be nice and strong. It's nice and thick. You do have your pocket clip there. It is a frame lock. Thumb studs there for deployment, and also the flipper. I'll just show you here real quick. I mean, you really gotta you, you gotta flip this thing, you know, with your wrist when you open it up. But that handle doesn't have um, you know all kinds of bumps and ridges to you know lock individual fingers into. But the way that falls, very comfortable, I think. And this is definitely going to be more budget friendly than some of the other knives we're talking about um, in this video. This one does have some jimping up here on the top, on the toward the back of the knife, and then down here on the base of the knife. Nothing on the underside. Schrade SCH302. And if you like this one and you want a smaller version, they also make this in a smaller version as well. Now this next one is actually the smallest of all the knives we're looking at in this video, but it just feels beefy. It feels hefty to me, and so I thought let's cover this one. Uh, cover this one as well. This is the Gerber DMF Auto. DMF is dual multi-function, so you've got the lock on the back here. Pull this back, shows a little red. Red is dead. Now you can deploy it, and then you're going to pull to toward yourself with the uh, lock, and that's going to swing open. So you can see you've got that Tonto uh, tip with serrations. You can also get it with a what they call a modified uh, clip point with the uh, with the serrations as well. S30B steel, so a nice steel, very very comfortable in hand when you actually have the knife out and deploy, the blade deployed, you can lock this in so that you won't be able to, you know, basically bump that and fold the knife back in on your hand. Pocket clip there, you can see that is reversible so you can switch it to the other side if you wanted to. Um, I'm saying that and now I'm actually looking at this material. It may actually not be reversible, but anyhow, it, it's set up as I like it anyhow. So lanyard hole, you got this extra pommel here. Definitely a very tactical knife. Now this one is not actually listed. You're not going to be able to pick this up on Amazon. It says that you need credentials to purchase uh, this knife on the Gerber website. But if you like this, they have the exact same knife and with the modified clip point or the Tonto uh, for around $50. They just don't tell you what the steel is. And so some people get nervous about that because they call it that Gerber mystery steel. But um, I actually, when I got this for a view to add to a uh, this video series or another video that I'm going to be doing uh, possibly on uh, tactical knives, I... Um, I asked for the modified clip point and they sent me this one as well, which I got to be honest, I was a little disappointed because I really liked the look of the other one, uh, but this one's still cool. Very, very solid knife. So especially if you're in law enforcement or military and you've liked Gerber, some people like them, some people don't, but if you like Gerber, I would encourage you to check out the, uh, the DMF and the DMF Auto if you're able to, you know, use that in your line of work. So DMF Auto, comfortable, hefty, good tactical knife as far as you know, the look and feel of it, in my opinion. Two more knives. This one is the Benchmade Contigo or Benchmade Contego. This is a beautiful knife. This is definitely a tactical folding knife. Definitely a large knife. Uh, $180 it's gonna cost you. This is the Benchmade 810 is its number. You can get it in black or satin finish. You can get it with serrations or without serrations. And they now actually have a, um, they have a fixed blade version that came out a couple years ago as well. CPM M4 steel with a Rockwell hardness of 62 to 64. Definitely don't want to be doing a ton of prying with this thing. It's definitely going to be a self-defense, again, tactical tactical knife. Very grippy texture for that, uh, for that hand. I believe that's G10. So just you know, be aware, if you're using this just for everyday use, I think it's going to beat your hands up. Very grippy, jimping up there on the top and on the back there. So with the gloves, I think you'll be totally fine, but just be aware, it's, you know, as far as an everyday carry knife, this may be... It may beat up your hand. You do have a glass punch there on the end. You can see your pocket clip. You can go right or left side. It is going to be tip up carry either way. 
Got that beautiful access lock that just functions extremely well, extremely durable. Um, I have a buddy who calls this my Batman knife. He just is like, that's something Batman would carry. And I'm kind of like, I, I think you're right. I got this knife after I, um, when I actually got um, ordained as a pastor, you know, I got a bunch of gifts from people and I got some cash. And so I used some of that money to invest in this knife. So this one kind of has a special, special place in my heart because of, uh, because of that day and that experience. So the Benchmade Contego, I have EDC this. Um, it is quite comfortable and quite light, all things considered. I just know that at one point I, I took this knife out to like cut some string one day and someone was like, that's a really big knife to be carrying around. So I thought, uh, maybe I shouldn't be EDCing this knife uh, as much. Anyhow, Benchmade Contego, really nice, 810. And you can once again get it black blade, satin blade, serrations, no serration, and the fixed blade version as well. Last up is this one right here. This is just the monster. And I was mentioning uh, before, you know, like showpiece knives that are just conversation pieces. This is the one that uh, Joel from CRKT was talking about. This is the going heavy. This is the large version. 8CR13 MOV. It's going to run you around 100 bucks. does come with that sheath from Ruger. You can put that, put that on a belt. You can actually attach it to some other gear with that webbing. But this thing, this is just ginormous. I mean, look at that thing. That is just huge. Uh, real huge handle. I asked Joel, I was like, what would you use this for? And he was like, yeah, it is a conversation piece. But that said, you know, it's thick enough that if you had to do some more aggressive use with this, you certainly could. This is not going to be something you're going to slide into a pocket and carry around. You definitely want to have the sheath if you're, um, if you're going to be carrying it around. It's just, it's just so big. Five inch blade. Like I said, it does come with the sheath. There is a smaller version, which has a 3.5 inch blade. Um, and you can get it with or without the serrations. This is clearly the, uh, the plain edge. Just a monster. Just a monstrous knife. So, yeah. Look at that thing. I don't, I don't even know what to say about it. It's just, even the, the thumb stud's like as big as my head. Just a huge, huge knife. And I'll deploy it for you here. That didn't lock in, did it? No, let's try again. There it goes. Ruger. Going heavy. Around $100 partnered up with CRKT to make this knife. So there you have it, some oversized, pretty heavy, just just big knives, big knives, possibly for everyday carry. Uh, definitely, uh, you wanna make sure you got your belt on that day if you're running this, uh, running any of these knives in your uh, pocket pants just because these things are, they're large and in charge. So if you've ever used one of these or you have one like this, you know, that's a, a pretty large for an everyday carry um, knife, why don't you let us know, leave a comment down below. I'll be interested to see what people are carrying in this kind of what I would consider oversized knife category for everyday carry. Thanks for checking out the videos. As always, I want to invite you to subscribe and um, more videos coming soon, particularly in this everyday carry series. Take care.